Hey guys, welcome to another video from Airsoft Obsessed. My name is Tom and I'm going to be taking you through the features of the new KZ-61 Scorpion gas blowback submachine gun from Kedi Bouet whilst I sit here in this rocking chair because I like to be comfortable when I talk about BB Wars. Development of the VZ-61 Scorpion was initiated in the late 1950s with the intent to provide various non-infantry units with a lightweight personal defense weapon that brought more firepower than the standard pistol. First prototypes of the new weapon were built in 1959 and was officially adopted by the Czechoslovak Army in 1961. Although the VZ-61 Scorpion was created for the Czech Army, a few scorpions found their way into the hands of various niche groups, which favored the weapon for its small size and the subsonic capabilities of the 32 caliber ACP cartridge. I totally just plagiarized that from the KWA website, and I feel absolutely no remorse about it. Although I will say it is wrong and illegal in some cases to steal intellectual property. With that being said, the BB Wars version from KWA is, of course, chambered for 6mm BBs and is small enough to be carried as a secondary weapon, yet practical enough to be used as a primary if the shooter so desires. The gas system is KWA's famous NS2 version and runs on green gas. Rate of fire is said to be a whopping 21 rounds per second with a velocity sitting very nicely in the CQB range of around 330 FPS. Without further fluff and or ado, let's jump right into the features of the KZ-61 that make it just so titillating because who doesn't love things that titillate? Here we see the muzzle of the scorpion. Nothing too exciting here, and quite frankly, I wish there was a little more excitement here, mainly in the form of 14 millimeter threading, so that I could put a mock suppressor on there. But I guess that just wasn't in the cards. Thanks a lot, Obama. I kinda dig the front sight, which is true to its original form with a single piece of metal that they bent over on each side. It definitely adds that old school look. That front sight post in the center is adjustable, by the way. However, I don't think you'll need to be that precise with this thing. It is a close quarter weapon, after all. Not a charging handle, but charging knobs, one on each side, which you pull back to rack the bolt. The knobs will cycle when the gun is fired. A look inside the gun through the top ejection port, you can see the signature KWA hop-up along with the feeding ramp. You'll notice those teeth encircling the entrance to the hop-up chamber, which require the use of a special tool that KWA uses with pretty much all their guns to adjust the hop-up. If I had to pick my least favorite thing about any KWA gun, it'd be having to use that hop-up tool to adjust the hop-up. However, their hop-ups themselves are usually some of the more accurate systems out there, so it does make up for the hassle. Moving farther back on the gun, we get a look at the adjustable rear sight, which again, like the front sight post, probably doesn't need to be adjusted. I think it's mainly for looks, since this is more of a CQB weapon. If you adjust the sights on your Scorpion, you might qualify as a tryhard, so keep that in mind. At the very back of the gun, you can see how the over-the-top folding stock locks back into place. You can also slide the entire base plate of the stock off the gun to make it lighter and more of a pistol than a submachine gun, if that's how you want to roll. On the left side of the gun, just above the trigger area, we see the fire selector, which allows full auto, safe, and semi-auto selection modes. To trick you into thinking I'm doing a really thorough job at covering all the details of this gun, I took this photo of the mag release button, which, I would point out, is on the opposite side of the gun that many of us are used to. This is likely to be a part of the original design rather than something KWA just cooked up on their own to mess with us. See that rectangular button thing just on the front of the trigger guard? Cool. Me too. I don't know what it does or how it works, but it does something with the mag or the bolt release or something else. Press it for yourself and try to come up with your own conclusions. I only got to spend about an hour with this thing and was afraid of breaking it since it didn't belong to me, so I didn't horse around with it too much. I just took a few sexy photos and I gave it back. Oh, would you look at that. The magazine has been released from the body of the gun. There it sits, separate but equal. This might be the worst airsoft video of all time. Okay, 
A little more serious, the gas infill valve is on the bottom of the magazine for your filling pleasure. They thought the pistol grip was the only polymer-based material used on the gun and the rest was metal, but according to KWA's website, most of the gun's construction is made up of this same heavy-duty polymer, which impressed me. The gun itself is very heavy-duty and has a very nice realistic weight to it. Also, what is that on the bottom of the grip? Surprise! It's a lanyard loop thing for looping lanyards and things, clearly. So there you have it, a quick and dirty and slightly dumb rundown of the KWA KZ-61 Scorpion gas blowback submachine gun by KWA, which of course, if you were listening, you'd know that I just said KWA twice in the name, and then the third time just now. Before you open a new tab and head over to Pornhub.com, why don't you check out Airsoftology's video coverage of the Scorpion, where he takes us through some of the performance characteristics of this gun and what you can expect from KWA's latest entry into the gas submachine gun market. If you prefer to just head straight over to Pornhub, I suppose I can't fault you. And I guess there's really not much I can do to stop you either. Either way, my name is Tom. You're watching the Airsoft Obsessed YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. Call your hits. Eat your vegetables. Don't take your goddamn BB guns out in public. And have a nice day. This isn't considered chair softing, I don't know what is.